Welcome everyone to yet another tutorial. Today we'll take a look at the trigger bot. What is a trigger bot you might ask? Well, a trigger bot is simply an application that shoots whenever there is an enemy in the crosshair. This is possible because we can read the crosshair ID value and get the entity underneath. We compare our player's team with the entity's team and if it doesn't match, we simply force our character to shoot. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join the Discord server. If you want to talk to me personally, then consider joining the premium membership over at my Buy Me A Coffee page. You also get access to the source code of all of the new videos, plus access to a multi-hack with all of the features combined in one project. This only costs you five dollars. And we are at the desktop. So let's code this trigger bot that we want. Download the template project from the first episode. It will be linked in the description with a video tutorial on how you do it. So go do that if you haven't already. And when you have opened the program.cs inside that template solution, we can start to delete this code. So we will not use it, it's not really necessary. And from here, we will declare some new variables because uh, we will need the local player because we want to read our crosshair. We want the entity list because we need to get the entity which is in the crosshair. So we get the crosshair ID and we add the crosshair ID times 10 bytes to get the entity underneath. So let's declare some variables. We'll do it in the main method because why not? So we have the local player. Now I also have haze damper on my right. So it will be linked in the description. Here is all of the networks and so on for the CSGO updated. So if we wanted our local player, we would just do control F for searching. Type local player and go down. We see here DV local player. We copy this, paste, and we get the next. So, uh, yeah, that's not, not an error, but we'll use them later so we don't really care for that I highlight. We have the local player, we want the entity list, which, guess again, we search, we take the DV entity list, copy, paste. We want the health, so search for health, we want the team number of the entity, so search for team. We also want the force attack address because we want our character to shoot and we will do it uh, using this address. So we search for force attack. Open that. I forgot to write team. We have the last offset, which is the force attack. And I think we have everything now that we want to use in this trigger bot, this very simple trigger bot. We have the entity list, local player health team, and everything. If I've forgotten something, we'll just add it later. But let's move on to the main loop. In this main loop, we'll do while and then true because we want it to run forever. In this while true, we want to check if we're holding a hotkey because uh, 
it would be much nicer if we can control the trigger bolt by holding down a key. To do that, we will go under the internal class. We do dll import because we want to use get async key state. Oh, what am I doing? This is a very difficult dll. A lot of this is improvised, so I, I'm sorry for not being. <laughs> very structured. So that will be a static extern short. Get async key state. We will use the keys V key. Now this will give us an arrow. That's because we are not using system.windowsnorms.forms. So hover and click on the solution shouldn't be any errors now and we can move on all right if get async key state keys dot and now for the mouse button keys we had the left click the right click and so on i want to use the mouse button five for this or mouse button four uh, yeah mouse button 5. So, uh, if that's less than 0, which means we're pressing down the button, we will continue in our code. So, if we're holding the hot key down, we will start to read our player's information, which we declare as a buffer, which will be equal to sweat.readpointer. Sweat is the memory library which I've included, which I've written. We read a pointer and we use the client and the local player. Okay, so we have read the address which comes from the client plus the local player. This address, we will add the crosshair ID. So we'll create a new variable, which is called crosshair ID, which equals to to read. And now it will be bytes instead of read pointer, because we want to read the value as byte. Instead of using anything like the client or the local player, We'll pass in our buffer. After that, we will add the offset crosshair ID. Uh, did I name them? No, as I said, we forgot an offset, which is the crosshair ID. How could I forgot forget that? So, crosshair ID is an offset we add to our local player to get the value of the or no the id which the underlying entity is in the index of the entity list so if the uh, two players maybe play uh, my bad maybe player one has the id one maybe the enemy has the id two and if we aim at the enemy then we would get uh, that ID, so two. So here we have crosshair ID, which equals to this. Now we can, we'll have to change that because it's the same as here. We'll call it cross, because why not? We'll read the crosshair ID. Now we also need to read the amount of bytes we want. So we will read four bytes because it's an integer. Integers are four bytes uh, in 32 bits. Now we have the crosshair ID, but it will be in bytes. So we will have to use bit converter dot to int. We will start reading from zero and we're done. So now this will be an integer. <laughs> 
Uh, we want to get the underlying entity for this cross -hair, for this cross ID. And to do that, we will have to read client plus entity list plus this cross or this ID of ours. So we'll create a new variable. We'll call it enemy, which equals to uh, swear dot to read pointer client and now entity list plus and our cross minus one. So it's not uh, like we think it is. It's an index with which starts from zero, I believe. So we have to do minus one because it's like a dot count instead of an index. But we do minus one, we get the entity. We do it times zero, ten or ten bytes. This is because each entity in the game is ten bytes apart. So we get the ID, we do it times ten bytes, we add it to the entity list. To get the under underlying entity. Now that we have the enemy, we can compare this enemy to our local player. So we also need some local player values. So we'll use our buffer. But the only thing we need in our local player is the team value. So we call this our team, which equals to, and uh, now we copy this because it will return as an integer. We use the buffer because that's our local player. But now instead of the crosshair ID, we use the team offset, which we declared here, to get our team value. Like that. Okay, so. We have our team, we need the enemy team, so uh, enemy team, which will equal to its converter because it's an integer. It's just a lot of repeat here, but instead of using the buffer and the T, or we will still use the team officer, but we will not use the buffer, we will use the enemy pointer since we read it here, we read the client and entity list plus that crosshair ID and so on. So we read the enemy who are in the crosshair, read his team and check if he's on our team or the opposite team. So we can do that check by doing an if statement if our team equals enemy team but we also want the enemy's health so since we don't want to shoot at dead bodies so we use the enemy again but now we read from the health offset there we go now for the last check and enemy health is greater than two. So for some reason I think they might stay on one health. So yeah, let's change that to one. That would mean that the trigger bot wouldn't work on enemies who have one health, but maybe someone can Help me on that. All right. If everything goes well, if it's an enemy, that should not be. We don't. <laughs> we don't want to aim at teammates. That's my bad. So if our team does not equal enemy team, and the enemy is not dead, we will aim at the enemy. So. To do that, we will just 
to sweat that read for bright now bright byte and now we pass in the client and the force attack opposite so force attack and now we need some new bytes so bit converter no my bad it's bit converter dot get bytes because we pass in bytes so get bytes we do five because the force attack value is four when we do plus one or change it to five in this instant instance we perform an attack but when we perform something we'll have to wait a bit now i don't think we have system.threading so we'll have to add it system uh, using system threading there we go thread dot sleep so just sleep in between we will sleep one millisecond and we will do minus attack so we change it back to four we need to do this or do this so we can perform another attack again so we go five four five four five four which means we can attack again after whip shot our shot Outside this function or uh, this if statement, we will also want to sleep. So let's sleep. Uh, let's sleep for one millisecond here as well. We want it to be really fast. Now let's test this on CSGO. So if everything is correct, we should just be able to click play. But Pro go to properties, add dash insecure. Otherwise, back will be enabled and you can get banned for this, which is not the mission of this video. Okay, so inside, hold our aim key and it shoots whenever we're aiming at them. So let's get them a bit closer. Take a closer look. Now let's take out the cavalry helmets. So I'm just sorting the hotkey now. So, very accurate. Let's pick our auto sniper. Let's make them move, so. Yeah. Double. So, if you want to use this trigger bot effectively, and I would just hold corners with like um, A or a W P or yeah, just hold a corner and let the trigger bot do the work. Where are all the enemies? Like the video, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe to answer comments. Work answering, and I will see you.